need access to record, let me know that as well. Uh, Royal Howell, you're up first, sir. Good morning, Coach. How are you doing this morning? Royal, good, mo good morning, buddy. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Uh, Coach, can you just talk briefly on that phenomenal finish uh, this past Saturday, uh, one point win at Clemson? Um, what did that do for your ball club, just the momentum, just the hype? What did that do for your team just to, in a hostile environment versus one of the toughest teams, one of the hottest teams in the ACC? Well, it was a Royal, as you know, it was a great game. Uh, we'd been, we actually, we've been in a bunch of those games this year, early on in the year against Boston College. Um, um, you know, against uh, Notre Dame, um, and and in here recently, the last couple of games was Wake Forest and Pitt, um, and I just it was a great it was a great atmosphere. Um, you know, obviously Brad's done a really good job this year, and his team is playing well. And um, obviously, um, going on the road, getting a really good win was uh, good for our guys. And I just thought DJ uh, Horn made a great play, and uh, more importantly, on the back end of it, I think we did a good job without fouling and. You know, got a good stop with 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 nine seconds left on the clock, and it was a great win and something that we can continue to build on and get better from. And um, obviously, with the, in the world of the net, when we talk about quad ones, it was a good quad one win for us, especially on the road. And in preparation for uh, Syracuse, what are some things that jumps off the film that you're uh, you know calls for concern for your ball club getting ready for them? Well, I think a couple of things is they're they're really good in transition. They do a great job. Um, I mean, they get the ball out quick and they try to get the ball up the floor as much as they can. Um, you know, we the last time we played them, you know, quite honestly, they took 32 free throws and um, that didn't work out for us. We only got 11, so we didn't do a good job in that area. And I think Judah Mintz himself took 21. And so, we, you know, we got to do a good job with that. And I think now because he doesn't have as much depth, um, they're starting to have a mixture of a little bit of man and some zone. And so I think that's a couple of things that we got to, you know, work on. Usually, you know, when Coach Behan was there, you knew preparing for um, Syracuse, you had to spend, you know, every minute on their zone. And now I think, you know, what Red's doing, he's playing a combination of both. So you got to do a little bit of both now. Thanks, Coach, and good luck tomorrow night. Thank you. Uh, I'll go next to Brett Friedlander. Hey, Kevin. How you doing today? Hey, Brett. Doing all right. So um, you've had some pretty high scoring guards in, in the past. I mean, last year, Jaquavian and Jarkel, but could you put into perspective a little bit as to how high a level DJ is playing at right now? It's crazy, Brad, that you asked that question because I don't know that he's actually getting the credit that Jarkel Joyner and Jaquavian Smith got. Um, and because those guys could really score the basketball. And even, you know, we had guys like Sebron. Um, uh, he, the anticipation was coming in that he wouldn't be that type of score. You know, obviously DJ came in and he was averaging about 12 points a game, a little over 12 at Arizona State. But, Brad, he's had a five-game stretch that's probably as good as anybody in the country, um, shooting the basketball, playing overall. Um, he's meant so much to our team. Um, because his ability to score the basketball and he's he's doing it, it's weird because he's he's very efficient in the way he's doing it. And I've played him some at the point. I played him some off the ball, and uh, he's been so important in us getting over the hump in a lot of these games. So, you know, I, I give a lot of credit to him. He's he's worked extremely hard on this game, and uh, right now he's seeing a big basket. Thanks. Thank you, Brett. Uh, Corey Smith, go ahead. Kevin, obviously your team breaks through this past Saturday, two games at home against teams that are, you know, quad two, quad three. But how do you avoid that that kind of letdown after winning such a big game to to keep uh, going in the ACC as well? You know, Corey, the weird thing is I don't know that the, we can call any of these games possible letdowns. I mean, you look at the parity of our league and, you know, we can talk about Syracuse because they're tomorrow and, you know, they, they've got seven wins. Um, we lost at their place. Um, you, you just look around college basketball, um, and, and in particular, our league, I think everybody's beating up on one another. And, you know, on any given night, you know, it, it seems like anybody can go into someone's place and win. I didn't think so. I didn't know if anybody was going to go in Virginia and get a win this year. And then Pitt did a great job doing that part of it. So, um, I just think we got to stay the course. I think we got to do a good job of being us and kind of build on the, the Clemson win. You know, when you look back at the, you know, the Pitt and Wake Forest games, 
they were one possession games. They could have kind of went either way. And I think literally with every team, and I say this every year, but more so this year, you've got to really focus on that next team and try to lock in and do a great job of um, preparing for those guys because every team's so equal. And kind of as a follow-up to that, the last Syracuse game, your th- your rotation of three bigs with DJ Burns, Ben Middlebrooks, and Mo Diara finished 7 of 21 in that game. Uh, do you feel like you have a better feel for the rotation uh, in terms of the bigs now going into this one? Or do you feel like those guys offensively are playing better as well? No, I thought the rotation was <laughs> – I thought the rotation was good. That was the first one of those games we started being and, um, you know, both um, – Mo together and brought DJ off the bench. To be honest with you, uh, Corey, our bigs just didn't play well. Um, they they really struggled. Um, but those are the three guys who, you know, are starting to play well together. And we've been, been able to rotate them in and out and playing both Ben and Mo a little bit at the four. But um, they just have to uh, – we've got to get better. Uh, they got to play better in those type of games. But that, that was probably the one game that I didn't think that any of our post guys played well. Thank you. Uh, go next to Noah Fleischman. Hey, good morning, Coach. You talked about you know playing two bigs at Syracuse last. That's the last time you started two until at Clemson. What did you kind of like about you know starting those th- those two at Clemson, but having that rotation, especially with you know the way that Mo was able to to knock down some some threes for you. Well, it worked out for us. I mean, you you I mean everybody knows this when you're um you know you playing against Clemson. I mean they you know. PJ Hall is will be most of the conversation because he's so good and he's done it for so many years here. But you know, uh, Ian Shefflin has been having a great year, and you know, obviously we you know we couldn't match their size and phys- physicality if we didn't play two two bigs at that time. I mean, they were just um, you know both of those guys are really good inside out. Uh, PJ started to shoot the ball from three as you saw in our game, but. Shefflin's really hurt us um, over the past and both of those guys with their interior play. And so we needed size to be able to combat some of that. And I thought, you know, you know, between Ben, Mo, and uh, DJ, I think they all responded in a very positive way for us. Uh, JC Zembo, go ahead, sir. I know it's recency bias, but the play that Casey Marcel had in a possession by possession game almost feels like something you could be telling teams for the next 10 years, because if he doesn't create that jump ball and that steal, you guys don't even have a chance maybe at the end to win it. You know, how important does that show how each possession counts and how, you know, basically Casey, you know, did what he needed to do to win a game? JC, I don't know what was better, his hell ball or him picking me up at the end of the game. Um, it was um, it was a big play. And, you know, uh, those plays, you know, you look at – you know, our league is, as I talked about earlier, our league has come down to a lot of, you know, possessions, uh, one or two possessions at the end of the game. And that was one where we consider that's a winning play. You know, he made a winning play there by, you know, with our ball on hell possession. Uh, we told our guys that how many timeouts and uh, who who would get the ball on a hell ball. And I just thought when Mo missed that free throw, he did a good job of sticking his nose in there and, and really, you know, tying the ball up. And it, it really actually put us in a situation uh, and gave us the opportunity to win that game. And so, you know, one of the things we worked on last week um, during our week off is, you know, trying to finish games. If you look at games at the end, the team that who makes the least amount of mistakes down the stretch with about five or six possessions usually is a team that wins the game. And I thought he made a winning play there. Yeah, one last question in from Chris Clark. Real quick, Coach Keith, Sarah, ACC's headed back to D.C. for the men's tournament. You got a guy in Casey from my hometown. I wanted to know what it was like or what it's what it's like recruiting those uh, D.C., DMV area guys there uh, and uh, what you like about them, if you will. I need a, I need a few more. Um, Jeff Cable's getting them all now. You got the good guard from D.C. area. You know, my, my Hargrave days um, – some of my better teams were guys from the D.C. area. And, I mean, you know, and, you know, DMV. And we had, you know, we had some really good players. And, um, you know, when I took this job, we obviously we had Renard, I mean, Renard Freeman from there. And, um, but good players, good place. Um, it's a basketball state and area, states and area. And, you know, I'm excited to go back there and play in a tournament there. Thank you, Coach. Thanks.
Kevin, thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks.